All right. Welcoming Sandy Coomer to the room. Should be seeing her in just a bit. <laughs> yeah, there she is. Yay. No, I can't see her. Let's see. I'm going to oh, tile that. There we go. Now I can see everybody. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Welcome. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry. I had. <laughs> I was I was talking about some people that didn't or that had struggled with technology and it was me myself. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? You're not doing it right. <laughs> it's so odd that it wanted your email and everything. Oh, it's, I think I was doing it wrong. <laughs> oh, oh. Well, I'm definitely learning Zoom myself. So, welcome everyone. Good to see everyone. And welcome to Gestalt Poetry Open Mic. We have uh, several people starting before the open mic, the feature, and then a, a few after. And then to add a lot to the mix, I've brought for some reason five poems. <laughs> <laughs> but I think if everyone can read like one poem, like up to five minutes, we'll be okay if we do that. Um, so to get started, I have, again, five things. The first one is called Two Ideals, and that's a politically abstract poem, if that makes any sense, or an abstract political poem. Then Inheritance, which is an old poem from right after I graduated from college. Sketches excerpt, which is that narrative thing I'm working on with like the mini stories, it's just an excerpt of that. I know I brought a ton of stuff. Okay, uh, of Simultaneity, which is a dark, cultural poem with a, a happy ending and then <laughs> an excerpt from summer thicket which is that long summer poem so it's a bunch to think of uh, two ideals inheritance sketches of simultaneity or summer thicket <laughs> i always make it hard i'm sorry i loved the summer thicket didn't we hear a piece of that before we did. It's, it's still going. <laughs> There's a, it's a long poem. Would you like that? Sure. Is yes. that good? Yes. 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 Navita is asking to be put on the list too. Navita wants to add. Yep. Ah, did I just? Oh, technology is failing me. Oh, Navita, we don't have time until the end, if that's okay. That's okay. Okay, cool. All right, I'm going to read this little bit from Summer Thicket. I have to get my language in order because it starts off in a foreign language. <laughs> okay. Quien me toca, pregunta el verano. Quien lo toca, quien toca la luz profunda, la profundidad de la luz. Whole mother blooms. Deep heart blossoms, blooms, blossom melee. This room within the loving room, a bowl of summer blooms within a bee's buzzing, zoom by zoom, by zoom by zoom. Je joue, je jouim, je j'aime, frige, some summer, summer, summe, 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 ete, ovule, avoseli, se some chisoi. Shizem, Shizem, Sisem, Kurel, Gibiron, Zibiro, Slalom, Jetsum, Syncordia, the sun, the clouds consort, Griseum, Pyramidalis, Phoenicium, Persephola, Quitinia, Byzantina, Chiffonade, Astrantia, Angel Trumpets, Baby's Breath, Ladies' eardrops, black eyed Susans, cowslip, daisy, heads, blackberries, thistle, fireflies rest in Queen Anne's lace, wild pink roses embroider undergrowth, shimmering corn stalk silks thrive, drowsy green limbs trace rivers' edges, field grasses whispering lovely, whispers. I've got a bit more, but I don't want to take too much time. <laughs> but that's, it's just a lot of wordplay. It's really an ode to summer, so. 
Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> hey. Okay, let's see. The first person I don't see um, the first two people yet. So, Mark, would you like to be the first person to read? No? Okay. <laughs> I don't yeah, let's get it over with. I can uh, sit back then and have a cigarette. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> What do I get? Five? Mm -hmm. Okay. So the, the boy stands in the garden shooting crows. Of course, the cork that pops from the end of his rifle inflicts no real damage, but in the boy's mind's eye, he wings the winged creatures and watches as they skittle bopple to the ground hurtling, spinning, struggling, till they crash amongst the scrub at the far end of the garden with a silent flump of feather. The pop gun he holds, a present from his mother, is blue barreled with amber colored grips on the wooden stock, the grips depicting a cowboy riding his faithful horse. He gets pleasure upon pleasure upon pleasure from the trigger, which has a safety position, which he, while taking aim, steadying himself, breathing carefully as he lines up a crow. And then he fires the cork, the rifle producing an utterly satisfying pop. Today though, Today, he's assassinating his grandfather. Bang, grandpops, I shot you, I shot you down, he squeals. Ah, calls the old man. Ah, flat palm to heart. I've been shot six times by a man on the run. And the little boy laughs to see such fun and laughs like a drain as he reloads and shoots the old man in the face. Ha ha ha, grandpops, he cries, almost weeing himself with delight and playing they fall from the covered patio out into the heat of the day and they run and they run and they run and they run and they run, rabbit, run. Run, they do. Run through the small apple orchard. Pow, 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 calls the old man, aiming his fingers over his shoulder and the boy can hardly stand for giggling, but manages to get a shot off and wounds his grandpops in the leg left. Shot you, shot you grandpops, he calls. And they chase through the tomato vines and up past the peas and runner beans and along the rows of lettuce and courgettes and twice round the compost heap, it, gently sizzling in the midday sun, then back amongst the apples, pink-cheeked, pow, pow, they both call, generation chasing generation, life after life, sun pursues forebear, time tick, 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 tocking, on, forever on, cycle and circle. And the old man reaches for a hanky and waves this in surrender. But the boy has no mercy and smokes the old man to the ground. There within the orchard, they lie exhausted like the apples, wind fallen to the earth, panting the same breath, laughing like drains, laugh the same laugh, laugh through the same shaped lips, their happy eyes and the sun shines down. They sit up to look skyward, the little boy mimicking his grandpops. He uses both hands to shield his eyes and they sit and admire the infinite and the sweat that stains the back of their shirts forms the same sweated pattern. Thank you. Wow. Thanks, thanks very wow. much. Yes, that was beautiful. Have I have I done my five or have I got time for a quickie? 
let's do one per and then sure. go go forward and then yeah, we'll have yeah. a lot of time later okay thank you oh my gosh that was amazing thank you all right thank you we've got two more people who are not here who wanted to read so far and then that makes dana next dana malone <laughs> welcome I don't know if I have spinach in my teeth, but <laughs> here we go. I was trying to think of something already printed out, but that would um, nod to Sandy and our collaborations, mm. which have mostly been um, ekphrastic in nature. So she publishes a series of um, photos that a writer has taken of different countries and then pairs poets with those poems. So I did um, something from the Scotland series and um, she's helped me teach at the Frist. Thank you, thank you. Aww. This is an acrostic in response to a dance performance at a venue called Oz Arts Nashville. And I don't know how it translates without the images, but this particular dance um, was anchored by the mental health struggles of a principal in the company. Um, and it's called Kinetics Identity. This is a dance of madness, twin sold to distant answer, squirm and isolation failing to attract a partner, hair knocking crackle and haze, electric sweat and suspense, a man caught in half fall, the whistle of his sanity warped, all the atonal chords inside him, static on the axis, limbs gyrating in defiance. As a bass drum auto rifles, the dancer shimmies between tormented and restored, the agony of tensing mid-rotation and mid-leap, losing direction, or he sits with his back to it all, counting on his double joints, wild braids, discord ringing, his body writhing, no traction, fool's gold of rubber soul, imitating as if that makes it understandable. Seeing locomotive light as sunrise, is it night or day? brain healing or everything resting on his head for a break dance, sweat popping, eyes clenched, he slumps, almost combusts. At last, mercy comes. Other dancers enter his senseless world, stethoscope the madness to steady beats, diagnosis and cure. by Nietzsche. One must have chaos within enable, to enable one to give birth to a dancing star. Thank you. Wow, Dana. Wow. That was super hard to do too. From watching the performance to transforming it into all that beautiful language and the tension. The tension is palpable. Well done, well done. You're welcome. Francesa, are you there? Would you like to be next? Sure. Okay, welcome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I wrote a really short one called Birdhouse. Um, nesting is common in birds. Many of us find comfort in a place where we can nest. Birdhouses are basic places built where a feeling of safety is achieved. People take great care in building birdhouses. Let's reverse this. What if a birdhouse built, what if a bird built a house for us? Would we feel safe? The places we live are more permanent, but nests are destroyed all the time. Have you ever found a cracked egg on the ground? 
Oh, thank <laughs> you. That was sweet. Thank you. Beautiful. You're welcome. <laughs> Now, if you want to, it's totally up to you guys. We're through the first people who signed up, but for, for before the feature, but we have several folks here who signed up to read after the feature, but we could do the feature now and then have those folks. Does that make sense? Yeah? Yeah. Sandy, are you ready? I am ready. Yes, oh, I am. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. You know you're one of my favorite people in the whole world. Um, I appreciate you um, inviting me to be a part of this. I'm thrilled to be here and happy to see so many wonderful poets um, sharing their work too. So I am going to read from a, um, a book that I will have published in 2021. And the book is it will be called The Broken Places, and there's five sections in this book. So I thought I would just share one or two poems from each of the sections. Mm -hmm. The first section is broken. All the sections have to do with brokenness. Um, the first section is broken world. So the things about the world right now that disturb me the most in its, in its brokenness is school shootings, and the shootings of unarmed black men. Okay, so those are the two themes in this section that recur. So I'm gonna read one poem. Um, this is called Running. And I wrote this after the 2018 school shooting in Parkland, Florida. And I don't know if you remember those um, scenes of the children running outside and down the halls and out in the in the um, parking lot and how disturbing that was well i am a runner and about this same time i was having trouble with my hip and later had arthritis in my hip so i'm kind of paralleling my running with the running of these children so this is called running after the 2018 school shooting in parkland florida they will tear down the school this summer so that no child will ever have to run through that hallway again. All those children running, that slick floor, the light at the end of the hall, the afternoon breaking into pieces of glass, the pop, pop, pop of the breaking, the running. I tell the doctor I limp when I run and there is a pop of pain in my hip. The x-ray says arthritis. The doctor says, see this space, how little is left. It's going to hurt all that happening. They will tear every classroom down, the gym and cafeteria, the office, the theater, the band room. They will run every nightmare into the street every memory into the ground, all that running. Let's try this. The doctor guides a needle into my hip. This will dull the pain. He shoots my hip full of cortisone, the pop, pop, pop of the shooting. No more running, he says. All those children running, all those rooms, they will tear them down, they will dull the pain. Brick by brick by terrible brick, that building will fall. The pop, pop, pop of the falling. There's a lot of damage, the doctor says. You'll never be the same. And going directly into another shooting. Um, this is called Seven Ways of Looking at a Shooting. And I wrote this, <clears throat> excuse me, in re it's an ekphrastic piece, actually in the, the Chaos and Awe exhibit at Frist that Dana and I did a little thing together. Um, and the, this painting was a very, very large canvas and on it were lines and 
of kind of ghoulish faces, deathly faces, and they reminded me of um, faces in, in like dead bodies and kind of I'm using kind of that as the basis of this poem, Seven Ways of Looking at a Shooting. And this is a list poem, so it's numbered. Number one, circle, circle, pool of molten lava congealed at the rim, the scent of metal, smoke, a piece of wood smoldering. Number two, stick figure drawn on paper, an outline of a sentence, the modifiers dangling like legs. Number three, a phone call, a family, blue lights, white lights, a flashing yellow, an echo, a morning of ash. Number four, what do we do with this city when a man can't walk in his own own neighborhood when a man can't walk, when a man can't. Number five, statistics and numbers and counting. Someone in City Hall knows the percentages, equations, multiplication, square roots, and subtraction, subtraction. Number six, morgue cold, metal trays, a face beneath a sheet, a toe tag, a funeral home, a grave, Number seven, question, can you blame him? Yes. Question, can you blame him? No. We turn circles, we speak lava, we start over from the beginning. And unfortunately, that's kind of what happens. You think surely this will never happen again, ever, and then yet it does, right? So it's always over and over. Thank you, that was um, beautiful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The next section is broken relationships. So that kind of speaks for itself. Um, this is called Facts About Lightning. To the 500 people struck last year, a poem is the last thing you want to read, but please indulge me. Let's talk about fingers and nerve endings and how we know language by the way words feel in our mouths. This poem is about intense attraction. Don't make me say flash or streak or buzz. I will say razor and feather and ricochet. Demonstrate how passion rewires neurons the same way flames leap across fields. We saw the clouds tumbling in the west before the omen that was our voices traveled at one third the speed of light, all 200 million volts of it. We saw the damage, the flash over we do to our polarized bodies. There is a dark cave inside our ribs that has no name except vacant and energy and afterburn. We are dangerous together. We know that. We know that silence after a flare creates a certain pattern of scars like tree limbs or a sentence diagram. There's no need to discuss the plasma trail, the bursting blood vessels. We look at our hands and know what they're capable of. We know what they've already done. And this is a little, um, a little kinder, I guess, than the, that other poem. Still on relationships, Peacock Hill. What if we give up on forgiveness and instead walk through the brambles to the top of the rise and watch the wild peacocks roost in the trees? Turquoise and emerald, fringed and crested cobalt. Let's soak our eyes in color and kneel in the dirt, tune ourselves with the infrasonic music of their wings. We've been too long splintered and bandaged. Who bought that ax we shoulder between us? 
those scales that weigh our sins, like the city measures garbage hauled from office parks. If you need to find my weakness, I'll lay it out before you and write its story in blood. I don't think you'll be surprised by the dozen eyes, the luster of plum and gold. I am, after all, a figment of what you think I am. What if we climb the trees and lie in the canopy of night and whisper our secrets to the peahens? They know enough of love to give us good advice. Look how patiently they sit on their nest of eggs while coyotes sneer beyond the field of feathers. Hold an egg in your hand and paint our resurrection. No matter what you think about our chances, let morning find us iridescent and shimmering. Hey, wow. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So the next section is broken identity, and it really talks about what does it mean to be female in this world, <laughs> um, which is a very, very complicated question. But I, I kind of went, in this poem, I went back to an experience that I had when I was 18 years old. So take this knowing that I'm much, 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 much older than 18 right now, so things have changed um, a lot, but perhaps not as much as we might want. This is called Poem in Which My Body is the Ransom. And this is actually a true experience. The note says thighs and shoulders, mouth and eyes. I wait tables at an upscale restaurant in Belmead. I'm 18 with an invitation to spend a day with a 40 year old man play tennis, dine at the country club. Here's his card. Anthony builds houses, drinks bourbon at the bar, drives a Porsche, smiles with dark eyes, trick eyes. He calls me beautiful. I bring his food on a round white plate. He tips well. I need money for college. I am a flamethrower. My heat strips the night. I am a cracked window, a broken latch, an empty cupboard, a lost key. I am a vision, Anthony says. He leaves me love notes, beautiful eyes. I am a dark cavern, <clears throat> a lonely owl in the night. I am a tattoo of birds that fly up and off my arms. I keep Anthony's card in a drawer by my bed. Anthony is waiting at the front door of the restaurant. Anthony is watching me count tip money. I am a tidal wave wrecking the shore. I am a lost pier somewhere out at sea. I am a fish, flesh and scales. I am bait. I am a river cutting the canyon, a train surging between coasts. I am learning how it feels to be a woman. And a man is 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 a man. So um, Love it. the next section, oh, thank you. <laughs> the next section is broken body. And um, so a lot of this is about my husband is fighting cancer right now. So a lot of this is about that. <clears throat> so this is called hunger. At midnight, I drag the trash can to the fridge and start hauling. Slimy field greens, mold spotted cheddar, sour milk. I try to remember when we stopped eating, the day your diagnosis unraveled us or before that, when your symptoms bulged out of the box we made for them. How long we listened to your body's complaint, its voice raw and tangled like the sprouts I toss in the can, and now the shriveled strawberries, and now the thinly sliced honey ham, and now 
the trash can is full and the fridge empty except for a few items with long shelf lives, mustard, balsamic vinaigrette. Look at the woman I've become, scrawny with watching you suffer, starved for answers. Who has the energy to swallow? Your meager mouth chews and chews a cud of words. How could this happen? How can this be? We've nearly disappeared. Our eyes too large for our sunken bodies, our cheeks hollow, our bellies stretched across the bones of the future we're afraid to speak. I tie up the trash, take it outside to the curb. A harvest moon rises like an open mouth, wide and hungry above the empty street. Thank you. Thank you. Very powerful. Thank very you. real. And then this is called Insomnia Poem. So I pretty much can't sleep anymore. So I, I do a lot of thinking at, at night. And this is a list poem too. And it's just like a kind of a litany of, of things to do when you can't sleep, I guess. Insomnia Poem. Watch the rise and fall of his chest. Pray a trade, obedience for a rescue. Tug heavy questions from a dark well. Rail against unfairness. This is a sorry reward for a good life. Blaspheme. Pray again, forgiveness. Listen to the dark house, its voice weighted with bitter syllables. Replay medical terms. Decipher the meanings of prefixes and suffixes. Repeat a litany of drug side effects. Test how the word death feels on the tongue. Notice the house stretching around us, all the vacant spaces. Count not sheep or blessings, but years, weeks, days, sigh into the numbers. Slide your hand to his arm like a thief, brush his skin with your fingertips, relish the deliberate warmth. Aww. Those are so beautiful. Thank you, Lane. I don't have words, I don't have words. Thank you. So I just have a couple more. So this is um, the last section of the book is called Broken Heart. And this has to deal a lot with grief. Um, so my mom died in January. A lot of these poems have to deal with grief regarding that loss. This is called Traveling North with Grief. Winter. My breath, a mist rising beneath yellow tamarack trees. The wind shifts. Golden needles float down, spear my hair. I am decorated with death. I walk by the lake. Ice-crusted sand, footprints of a dog, brown speckled stones. I am 30 miles from Canada a thousand miles from your body in warmer ground. I name the face I see in the mirror, winter. I open my coat, let what's bitter and clean burn through me, a winter reckoning, the winter brittle star-torn wreck of me. Someone lit a fire in a cabin, wood smoke filters with memory of flame, and the lake shifts in its shallow banks and the tamaracks glitter. The narrow trail is braided with roots, the promise of an overlook. I practiced grief for a decade. Now from the heights against the jagged edge of mountain, I call for you. The white sky swallows your name, a single offering. I thought the cold would mock me. 
I wanted the cold to ruin me. I owed you that much to suffer in remembrance, a winter banishment, the papery skin of river birch, the aspen trembling, the wordless yellow gold tamaracks listening, and winter kissing the sky stung silence as if love could solve everything. That was gorgeous. Oh, the detail, the imagery. Mm. I just have one last poem. And this, this book is, boy, this is a downer of a book. <laughs> a lot of brokenness. But I do have one poem that I hope um, is actually the, the final poem in the, in the book. And it does have a little bit of, um, I don't know, something positive to end on, I guess. And I wrote this poem um, last year. Last summer, I had an uninvited but glorious pumpkin vine just grow in my garden randomly. I had no, I didn't plant it. It just started growing. And I got six beautiful pumpkins out of it. So I was so thrilled with that. Every day, it brought me such great joy. So this is about that. This is called to make sense of this world again. I want to see something small, a pumpkin seed in the beak of a crow, an accidental release and a turning of soil, a sprout, pale green, a leaf, an anchoring tendril, a floppy yellow flower and bee, bees. I'm willing to stand in pine straw and listen to bullfrogs groan as they crouch by a pond encumbered with string algae. There's so little space allowed for the untamed. A rogue pumpkin vine stretches to the fence, curves under oak leaf hydrangeas, reappears with an orb of green, swollen with carotenoids firing in the sun. The garden becomes an altar to orange, the tangled vine, a labyrinth of questions. How, when, why? Sometimes I'm shadowed by the state of this world, its dark edges, its darker heart. What good I try to do is casually undone by jaded voices speaking careless words. Forgive me, but sometimes I tire of weeping. Oh, let me have my fleshy rind, my fearless porous stalk. Let me follow the breath of dragonflies, the toe prints of salamanders, the box turtles game board shell. There's little enough reward for wishes and love's too often washed with spit. I struggle with the weight of the largest pumpkin, marvel at its beautiful heft. There are six now squatting like wayward gifts. It takes something simple, unexpected, something that proves its place by arriving uninvited, by daring to be seen between the dogwood and coneflowers. I want to see a harvest rising from the rubbish. I want to hold it in my hands as proof there are small things that have no business growing, but they grow anyway. Thank you guys so much for listening and for being here this afternoon. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for being here. That was beautiful. Everything, all you did, your amazing writing, Thank beautiful you. heart, beautiful mind, beautiful soul. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Wow, we've got some folks who've arrived since we started the feature. So let me see. Get my list out again. I did. Cynthia Winfield. There you are, Cynthia. There I am. Let me see if I can find my document here on the computer because the one on my phone isn't the current one. Hold on. Ah, here it okay. is. I got it and now where's my zoom screen because i like to have you in the corner of my eye there we go <laughs> yeah well that'll work until i have to scroll all right um this is okay um i've been challenged to write a ya novel in verse 
and this is a chapter for one of the characters. I haven't woven them together yet. Um, and they're all in the LGBTQIA plus community and challenged in some way, shape or form. Okay, Ilsa. Closing the lid upon my house, I slide the west window open with a metallic screech and the sun's last rays illuminate the caution tape around the mosque's perimeter. Praises to God, the one with whom I was raised and the one to the one of your understanding. The tornado blew through without understanding that cordoning off this lot would provide me a house quite different from the one in which I was raised. Its bottom and four sides metallic, its rubber lid one for which I speak praises, although in high winds proceed with caution. I've been here for weeks now and caution figures in less as I move ahead, understanding that I am safe and have cause to sing praises for God, or perhaps Allah granted me this house, its sides armored and metallic, into which I have settled and allowed my spirits to be raised. When Jake moved in at home, mom's spirits raised, but she worked evenings and I needed caution because the unbuckling of Jake's belt was metallic, too loud for easy understanding, especially in a house where before his arrival, I had sung praises. Once he entered my bed, no more praises could I sing. Indeed, my spirits were not raised. I knew I had to escape that house because when I told mom, she had no caution, just smacked my face without understanding that Jake was to blame. Metallic clicks of newly cocked weapons, metallic clangs of ricocheting bullets. I sing praises each night I shelter safely, understanding the precariousness of my situation now. Raised as I was in safety, now living daily in caution. Fashioning this dumpster into a house, this metallic container now rug-lined is my house. With mattress and blanket, I sing praises with caution, for I'm understanding any stray bullet could see my soul raised. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Wow. That's my word today. Wow. <gasps> that was so good. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> now we have Edith Blackbird. Are you still here? Edith Blackbird. Yay. <laughs> Can we hear you? Uh, yeah, can you? Okay, um, thank you so much for having uh, this uh, space for us to share. I'm really thankful for you being, you know, doing this host job is not easy at all. And uh, I appreciate that. And also thank you for sharing everybody. So much talent in this room that I don't know if I'm on the same level. But anyway, I want to share what, what I have. Um, this is a very old poem that I made when I came here to the US. I'm Mexican, I'm from Mexico. And this is a poem that I made uh, based on, you know, what sometimes can happen in the border. So hope you like it. I'm putting my ear up just to uh, have the music in my head, but not, you know, to share it, you to copyright things. Um, and this is called Inferno at the Border. <clears throat> Triggering warning. It's a sensitive topic about immigration. Thank you. Dios mío, tengo mucho miedo. Por favor, por favor, señor, deja que, nos, que lleguemos a salvo al otro lado. A little girl say to herself, while looking at her mother already weak, turned, talking to a mysterious nobody. Vamos, mamá, vamos. Tú puedes, tienes que resistir, vamos. She yells, scared and desperate. The sun was eroding their hopes viciously. Every single step caused sweat and pain. 
and those feet were too spent to stop in the middle of Inferno. 5, 8, 10, 15, 15, the little con girl counted. 15 strangers with the same purpose, same dream. Walking through the embers, those feet can feel every inch of Inferno's rocks and get rid of its favorite deadly jewels, the rattlesnakes. Hiding here and there, nowhere to be seen but everywhere to be found. They were able to escape from them, but that was the least of their obstacles. Fifteen she counted again, fifteen marching with photos in hand, loved ones, some of them living, some of them dead. A piece of motivation, a memory for their strength. A couple of dollars bills and plates or notes on their bodies to be recognized just in case. She remembers hearing from mom, oh girl, my baby girl, marching to a better place, everyone said. Vamos mamá, vamos, vamos, ya casi, ya casi llegamos, por favor. Tears starts to fill her childish pure brown eyes, so deep, so expressive, pretending to be strong enough for two lost human silhouettes. So that little girl took off the tears, wet her broken salty lips, and once again turned the head behind her backs nervously, cautious. Madrecita, hay que apurarse que nos va a agarrar la migra, madre, por favor. She encouraged her mother one more time. The little girl was tall. There was a paradise, a land with lots of opportunities, food for everyone. A place that she can freely decide to live fearless. Go to school and be just a child. Basic things, right? <sighs> Not in some countries like the one she was living before especially in her little town. Without thoughts on her mind, she pushed her steps even more and hold her mother's arms firmly. The silence, a very disturbing one then. La migra, corran! Some old rusty men jail. Everybody run while the devil showed his sharp teeth ready to devour fate and take the corpses as souvenirs, just like that. Mamá, mamá, corre por aquí, por aquí, ven aquí, vamos, mamá, shouted to her disoriented mother. Silence again, but this time, accompanied by fears, echoes of sorrow from fifteen mouths. <sighs> run faster, run, little girl, deep silence. <sighs> and... Bang, bang, bang! The noise of the hosts more than the silence far in the distance. Hollow expression of horror and the cold justice. Bullseye! I hear that damned stinky Mexican. You owe me a beer. The little girl hurt away. Collapsed on the ground with no reason, she thought. <sighs> the raspy breath sound of bubbles, but it wasn't coming from her. Mom was on her knees with empty eyes and reddish wound on the back ending on her chest. Mom got her reddish chest where she used to comfort the little girl on those hopeless nights. Mama, Mama, no, Mama, por favor, no, Mama. She tried to go back, but someone pulled her arm to continue and hide leaving behind the only source of love, the reason to be a gentle creature, her inspiration. No, 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 tengo que regresar, déjame ir, te lo suplico. She pleaded, covered in tears. Lupita, tenemos que seguir corriendo, no podemos regresar, the pregnant woman said to her. Diosito, mamá, ay, mi mamá. Lupita whispered to herself with a river of tears on her face while running, her Skeleton was shaking and control of it. Those dreams and hopes turned into ashes in a few seconds. High, wrong, high against the rocks, wrong with no name, high again, holding her rosary with red hands and misery. Tenga, mijita, cuando tengas miedo, 
Reza a la Virgencita. Ella siempre nos escucha desde allá arriba donde se encuentra Papá Dios. God. Those words coming from the victim of justice. Her blood goes down. The ground that is an anger, confusion, and missing part of her spirit now. Disillusion. Lupita escaping fair, no. Walking heavily, closer and closer to her supposed paradise, her new home. Lonely and empty. What is she going to do now? Just continue, I guess. She wants to die, but she must continue. She doesn't have the right to give up because those starving faces back home, her siblings, count on her determination, the hard work, and the daily bread, as the praise say. Lupita is a premature martyr, a hero, and a voluntary woman in child remains, the reflections of thousands, the God suffer and desperation of death, as we call Llorona in Spanish, we say. She could be maybe in front of you, maybe behind, next to you, around you. Just look at, can you see her now? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. So moving. And oh, thank you. Now we have Dane Insa. Did I say that correctly? Uh, it, it's Ints. Ints. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's a wonderful, uh, wonderful uh, uh, time. A lot of really nice readings. Um, so uh, I'll just dive in. A soulmate is like a sock missing its mate. You only find the missing sock mate once you've thrown away the solitary sock because you refuse to wear mismatched socks. Cold feet do not care, nor do they know the difference. How do you know the universe is laughing? After many weeks, you check your eHarmony account, finding there is a single new person showing up. Pulse quickens slightly. Your compatibility score is good with them, a 114. Uh, the highest I've seen is 123, so you respond, waiting for days for a reply. Several days later, it comes, I, I, I am a Trump supporter, they say. How do you know the universe is laughing? Because you are laughing too. Lelena, your photo is a Bukowski poem. Your pictures are a poem of you, unruly birthday hair, smile, you at the start of a romance movie, ready to ascend old wooden stairs, proud of backyard homemade deep dish kayakers in the background bay of glamour sunglassed you roadside rocket gear woman queen surrounded by fur baby love sunday sunny window smile sunlight park bench you have treats in the bag fountains bubble i hear them you fill the frame with interest against pink sunset clouds Red wine, ocean, and a stemmed glass. The seashore worships before you. You are the beauty. You are the brunette watching whales in Mexico. This poem of pictures asks me to ask to get to know you. Thank you. That was amazing. Thank you. So now, Navita, would you like to read a bit? Ah, oh, yes, please. Welcome. Thank you, and thank you for always having this, Amy. This is so nice. Uh, mm -hmm. This poem, some of you have already heard before, but it's uh, it's still is out of my book. It's in my book called uh, "The Day That My Vagina Tried to Kill Me," and. Uh, if you message me on Facebook, uh, we could try to get, get a signed copy to you. Uh, and I'll tell you how and everything if you uh, send me a message. This is, I can't fix you. 
I have come to the sad realization that no matter how I pray and wish it, I can't fix you. True, in my eyes, you are drop dead gorgeous and have a smile, my, 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 that would put the sun to shame. Your voice has a melodic quality and intonations that when you speak, even the angels stop their singing. And your eyes, man, your eyes have a smothering look and sectionness that just demands a bedroom scene. But still, I can't fix you. I can't fix the self-hatred, loathing, and low self-esteem that you seem to have for yourself. I can't fix how you think all women are no good and are only out to hurt and humiliate you. I can't fix how your mother treated you as a child, so you think all women must be this way. I can't fix how you have felt all your life that no woman really loved or cared for you. But is it really that you do not know how to love yourself? So now you do not know how to love another. I can't fix how all your relationships you have been in have failed because your bar for love was set too high. I can't fix how you blame everything and everyone for things that have gone wrong in your life. Man, I can't fix how you have an uncontrollable temper and feel that every woman because of your mother is out to hurt you. So you feel that you must disgrace and hurt them before they can hurt you. No, I can't fix that in your mind you were never given the respect that you felt you deserved and that you will never trust any woman with your heart. I can't fix that you felt all your life that you had something to prove and that no one really understands you because you will not allow them to know your heart. I can't fix how you think that you must lie to make yourself look big because you feel so small. I can't fix how you feel that you must continue to live in the past. So now you cannot appreciate what you have in the present. I can't fix how you see the world and others. So you hide behind a hard shield of anger, hurt, and unhappiness until one day you turn around and discover that you are all alone and have grown older, but no wiser. I'm sorry, my brother, but I can't fix you. Thank you. Thank you. Lots of truth in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, is there anyone else who'd like to read who didn't sign up? No? Okay. Is it okay if I read like one more? Yeah? <laughs> yes, yes. Okay. Um, I'm gonna read one that is the, the abstract political one. I can't, but there it is. Because it feels appropriate today. Two ideals, see-through world, walking on its hallowed grass. I wonder if Jefferson wanders beside us, his spirit ghostless, homeless, now they've gone so very far. Coming soon, the hall of irony, the expectant family huddled in the taxi. They've come to look for the history of ideals in this sculptured town where the flags are always at half mast for the homeless vets who wander this grass with me in desert and jungle camouflage, asking for the time. Inside one of these marbles, I found the abstracts. Jackson Pollock found one face out of two lovers, splattered, entwined on black 
and peach. On my way back out to the car, through revolving doors ungreeted, ain't nothing beat the sky. <laughs> Aw, so good to see everyone. Does anybody else want to read one? Anybody else want to read? Looking around. Okay. Well, thank you guys so much for being here. It's been a beautiful time and it's good to see everyone. And thank you again. Big hand for Sandy. Big yes. hand for Sandy. Aw, you're welcome. So lovely to hear everybody else in poetry too. What a talented group. I agree. I agree. We're very blessed. We're very blessed. Next time is going to be Corey Wells, and it's the fourth Saturday of, of August. We're getting on August now, so it'll be Corey Wells. So good to see everyone. Have a blessed evening. Thank you all. Bye. Bye-bye.